let's make some evolutions based on the Legend of Zelda. Eevee and its evolutions are probably the most popular Pokemon to exist aside from Pikachu and a few others. In general, people adore them and for good reason. Eevee has multiple evolution outcomes that all share a general aesthetic with its long ears, cat-like body, and cute eyes. So on top of it being quite an adorable Pokemon, it also has a flavor for everyone to enjoy. This has made people long for an evolution of a new type, like how we thought we would get a dragon evolution in Galar since that region has a lot of medieval fantasy connections and even has Reggie Drago who symbolizes the Dark Ages. And even aside from the predictions, people have been coming up with their own evolutions for the remaining types for years, like literally almost two decades, maybe even that. So at this point, it has become quite a repetitive thing to see in the fake mod community, to the point where it's a meme and assume that if you make a fake mod region, having at least one new evolution in it is a staple. But guess what? I don't really care. I still think the 1000th dragon evolution that I've seen is just as fun as the first. But I know not everyone is like me, so I'm making my own that will hopefully feel different enough that you won't get bored. And if you know me, I have my Zelda Pokemon project called Link Dimension, where we break all the rules in the fake mod community. I mean, every time I see someone suggest something in my region would be better if it was more realistic, I gotta tell them that we don't do that here. We got remade types, new types, broken mechanics, megas on steroids, weapons? Link, overdesigned fake mon, copy pasta Zelda enemies as fake mon, me losing my sanity, Zelda Pikmin, my cat Eevee, my 323rd grammatical error in my dex entries, but what we really have is my unrelenting desire to just have fun with it. Me like making fun creatures, me like art. This will be part one of a series of videos where I make evolutions on my Zelda types. I'm splitting all the Eevees up so I can have a mini series I can weave in between my other videos. So, hmm, let's see, what am I going to base these evolutions on? Well, I decided to do my best to give every evolution type a general aesthetic of an enemy or race in Zelda. I think it kind of fits with a similar theme I did with my unknowns of the Zelda types, where I based those on iconic Zelda symbols. But before I can start evolving Eevee into these new evolutions, we need a Hyrulean Eevee. So here's Hyrulean Eevee, and it's Hyrule type, which is the normal type if you're new here. In Hyrule, this Pokemon has an affinity towards adapting to its surroundings. It is also extremely adventurous and will try to find humans to give it company while it explores. Its battle ability Discovery makes it take reduced damage from the last type of a move that it was hit by. Its shiny is partially based on Eevee's original colors with a blue collar. This Eevee is honestly not much different from the original and that's on purpose. I really just wanted to give it a coat of paint that resembles the Hylian armor from Breath of the Wild and give it a more adventurous feel by making its hair kind of wild and free as if the Eevee has been out exploring way too much to keep it all prim and proper. While it's mostly a palette swap and a redraw, I hope it's something that people could see themselves venturing into caves and dungeons with. Now Hyrule's evolutions won't evolve by using evolution stones, and that's for two reasons. The first being that evolution stones don't exist in the same way that they do in actual Pokemon. They're created when a prismatic stone is filled up with elemental energy, and that's just used for the elemental variant mechanic of the region. And two, since these Eevees are largely based on the aesthetics of races and enemies in Hyrule, they'll all evolve from some iconic Zelda items associated with those cultures. I hope all that makes sense. For our first evolution, we're going to be replacing one that already exists, Vaporeon for the water type. Okay, calm down, calm down, please, I promise, it's going to be okay, just relax. I know people love Vaporeon, and honestly, it's probably my favorite evolution. I mean, it has the most interesting design when next to the other original two, and its features stand out quite well. And while I could make a regional Vaporeon, it's more fun to pretend like Vaporeon just doesn't exist in this universe and come up with my own take on a water-type evolution, which I'll be basing it on the Zora race that has appeared in many Zelda titles. So when Eevee is given a silver scale, it evolves into Zorion, the Zora Pokemon, and its water type. Zorion are extremely nimble. In the waters of Zora's domain, they are known for being able to dive far below touching the bottoms of trenches without needing to breathe. Its battle ability Deep Dive gives its water type moves a chance to inflict the Drown status condition which forces a Pokemon to only use moves that make it move across the battlefield. All the evolutions have a party ability that create an aura around you which gives you a higher chance of encountering a Pokemon of that evolution's type. Its shiny is based on a suggestion from a Patreon member to make it pink similar to Vaporeon's shiny. And I think it looks fantastic. 
If you don't know, in the past I attempted to make a Zorion based on the Zora armor from Breath of the Wild. And while I do think it was a decent idea, I don't think I executed it that well along with changing the direction of what I wanted the evolutions to be in Hyrule. The new Zorion looks more like an actual Zora and feels more like a water type with its sleek body and flipper back feet. I even gave it floppy ears to match the head fins of some of the Zoras and now Zorel even has a Zora friend. Next we're going to be showing an evolution you may or may not have seen. This evolution was featured on Birdkeeper Toby's channel last summer, but there's a high chance that a lot of my audience still hasn't seen it. We're going to be replacing another original evolution, Umbreon, for the Dark type. And as you know, the Dark type for Hyrule has been reimagined into the Twilight type, so let's check it out. This is Twileon, the Twilight Pokemon, and it's Twilight type. Twileon evolved as a result of Eevee absorbing the dark energy emitted from a Twilight Shard. If they are ever seen outside of the Twilight Realm, it is only at the end of dawn or at the beginning of dusk. Its battle ability Dusk to Dawn gives it a chance to inflict the Distort status condition when using a damaging Twilight move. A distorted target inverts their damage effectiveness. Its shiny is based on Umbreon's original colors, and that's just something I tend to like to do with regional forms and whatnot. Twileon is primarily based on this Twilight Wolf that Midna rides in the first Hyrule Warriors game, as well as the Twilight Race and Shadow Beast from Twilight Princess. I wanted it to feel silent and unafraid. I imagine its tentacles on its head flowing around it constantly. Also, when it gets aggressive, its markings will glow red, just like the enemy Twilight creatures. For our third evolution, we are going back to almost three years ago, where I made an evolution based on the Gerudo. The Gerudo are obviously the Zelda race associated the most with the harsh desert climate they inhabit. And luckily for me, the Hyrule region has a desert type, which takes the place of the ground type. So if you haven't seen it yet, let me introduce you to a design that somehow I haven't scrapped or even redrawn in a few years. Here is Gerudion, the Gerudo Pokemon and its desert type. Gerudion love wearing the clothing and jewelry of the Gerudo. Not only does it protect them from the desert's scorching days, but they understand the value of the items and will even steal to get them. Its battle ability Bandit gives Gerudion's desert type moves a chance to lower the accuracy of the Pokemon it hits. And if it does so, while they're holding an item, it will steal that item for itself. Its shiny is based on the Demon King himself, Ganondorf, with his dark olive-colored skin and his darker attire. Now I know what you're thinking, Bilsu. Pokemon shouldn't wear clothes, they're supposed to be creatures. And yeah, I totally get where you're coming from, but Pokemon have always been more than just animals to begin with. And on top of that, if the Pokemon has a legitimate reason on why it has a connection to clothing, I think it's okay, and it's also okay to just not like it for that reason. Gerudion's entire design is based on how they live alongside the Gerudo and value their clothing and treasures just as much as they do. The Gerudo have always been known for their interesting designs and their extravagant desert attire, so I wanted Gerudion to reflect that. It also shares their darker body color, iconic crimson hair, and amber eyes as well as being more feminine since the entire race is female outside of Ganondorf. Overall, people will either love this design or hate it, and all I know is I didn't change it after so many years, so I clearly like it enough. For the final evolution, we are going back to almost a year ago to the release of Tears of the Kingdom. Wow, it's almost been a year since that game's been out. Not only that, but we're getting the dragon evolution that we were definitely robbed of in Galar. And let this be the 1001 dragon evolution, but we're going to be basing it on the mysterious draconic goat race, the Zonai. Here is Zonion, the Zonai Pokemon, and its dragon type. Zonion like to chase Ryuni in the great sky city above Akala. They await the sacred guardian dragon's return to power. They seem to have acquired some of the draconic energy found within Zonite as well. Its battle ability, Immortal Bond, is if Zonion uses a dragon type move, it gives itself the imprisoned status condition, which prevents it from leaving the battle unless it's fainted. Zonion is primarily based on Raru from Tears of the Kingdom, the source of Link's changed arm as well as the King of Hyrule long ago. In Tears of the Kingdom, there were only two Zonai to base this design off of, Raru and his sister Minoru. 
Both look very similar, bearing dark teal skin, large white ears, and a goat-like facial structure. I really like Raru's design, and I felt like it was something I could translate pretty well into an evolution, especially with his large ears. I gave it markings on its fur and skin to resemble the golden parts of Raru's clothing, and it even has extremely long hair as its tail. My favorite part though is the Zonai energy emerging from its eyes, as well as coming from the teardrops hanging from Zonion's ears. To give it more of a draconic feel, I replaced its soft paws with dragon claws. Overall, I really like how this one turned out, and I especially love the colors. Let me know which evolution is your favorite, and give me your top 5 Zelda evolutions you would want to see in the future, and whichever get the most attention will be the ones I do next. For the next video though, I'll be making some very edgy Zeldamon, based on Majora's Mask. I'm really looking forward to that one, and I hope to see you there.